Thank you for joining us. I'm Erin Gregg, joined by our production team of Lubbock ISD TV students, and we're excited to share how Lubbock ISD focuses on every child every day. March is Music in Our Schools Month, and our district is fortunate to have incredible music teachers at each of our campuses. We visited Smith Elementary, where fifth graders are learning to strum the ukulele. We started doing it, maybe this is our third time doing it. It's been pretty fun because I get to play an instrument. I've never really seen any other instruments except for a piano. I thought it was a great stepping stone between singing and what they will do in middle school. In middle school, many of them will play instruments. And so this is a great transition that's easy to attain um, and is a fun lifelong skill. Most instruments are really hard, but the ukulele is just kind of a bit easier. It's challenging and I think I should be challenged so I can just get better. I really like kind of challenging myself, like moving my fingers faster if I can, and just learning different songs. It's been a neat opportunity to see them blossom. They know how to sing music, they know how to read music and write music, and now to play it on an instrument takes it that next step further. I'm proud of being able to do it. Just learning how to play an instrument, you know, something just maybe besides Singing and stuff, just playing instruments is just a really cool thing to learn how to do. Well, I just really love this class and I love playing ukuleles. I'm just grateful for the kids working hard and they have attained a lot in only three classes. So, can't wait to see what they do next. I'm gonna dance all day. Good, let's do it. Misty Reber is joining us today. Misty is our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, and we're talking about an important event for pre-kindergarten coming up, and so we're gonna get to that in a minute, but first I wanna talk about pre-kindergarten, because it's that time now for parents of young kids that would be ready for pre-K to think about enrolling for the next school year. And so, Misty, if you can start by telling us just why pre-kindergarten? Absolutely, so pre-kindergarten is an opportunity for four-year-olds to come to school. The most important pieces they learn are about the social emotional support, um, team building, how to get along with others, um, how to share. But in addition to that, they get all the pre-literacy skills that we get in school and all what we call pre-numeracy skills. So that is color identification and letter identification and learning how to use your voice and how to talk and how to say things and things about print that we don't realize as readers, as adults, that you have to learn to be ready to be a reader and to be a powerful reader. Well, and that's a, that's a great point, actually, because that builds on the next thing, which is how pre-kindergarten provides such a great foundation for kindergarten and everything that happens after pre-K. Absolutely. We believe that students that attend pre-K see a significant gain when they reach kindergarten. They're already ready to be readers, or some of them are readers, as they enter kindergarten, and it gives them a jump start. So it means that you have that jump start in elementary that makes things more successful as you move forward. Definitely. And we know pre-kindergarten is for four-year-olds, but we do have at, at a few campuses a three-year-old program, so tell us a little bit about that. We do. We have a three-year-old program at Alderson, Irvin, Hodges, and Jackson, or this now we'll have it at Cremona Harris Our next brand new year. campus. We're very <laughs> excited about that. And this program is... In addition to our four-year-old program, it supports students at age three. And they begin some of that early play, um, imagination, creativity, but they're also beginning knowing your name, how to hold a pencil, some of those early literacy skills, and just lots of work on vocabulary and support in school. So it's a great opportunity. Absolutely. Well, about this event that we mentioned at the very beginning, we have a kickoff event coming up soon, and so tell us about that. Absolutely. On April. 9th um, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can come to Central Office, um, which is at 19th and Q, and you can register or apply for pre-K or for kindergarten. And we're really excited about that opportunity. We'll help you fill in all of your paperwork, get you all set up and ready to go. Well, Misty, that is awesome, and we know that more information can be found at 
lubbockisd.org slash pre-K. That is sort of our hub for information. And so we just appreciate you being here this morning sharing some information about pre-K. Of course. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Covenant Health System partners with Lubbock <laughs> ISD in many ways to help students learn healthy lifestyles. Phyllis Underwood shares more about a special project at McCool Academy. One of our kind of goals at Covenant is to create healthy communities outside of our hospital. Tavia Hatfield is with Covenant's Community Health Program. People always think about hospitals and they think we kind of just wait for people to come to us. But a big part of what we do as well is try to invest in our community and keep people well and healthy so they don't have to use our hospitals as much. So when McCool Academy wanted to build gazebos for students to use in the courtyard, Covenant was happy to help. We thought that was a great way to encourage kids to be outside and get some fresh air and help, you know, break your day up a little bit when you can get outside the building. Along with physical health, Covenant is also focused on students' mental health. Right before kind of this craziness hit, we had um, been working with LISD on a grant called a KEY grant, which is Keep Empowering Youth, which is helping with that social emotional development and education in the classroom and helping train teachers so they can support their students. And during the pandemic, Covenant has partnered with Lubbock ISD to provide face masks and other supplies for students. LISD has always been a great partner with us because they do so much innovative work with the kids, they're the biggest school system in this area. They touch many, many lives. And so we're always excited to work on special projects with LISD and invest in our youth. You know, it's a little cliche, but they really are the, our future of this community. And if we can help our youth be productive and healthy and stay in school and get that education, then that helps our entire community. Thank you, Phyllis. If you would like to become one of our partners, just log on to lubbockisd.org slash pi or you can contact Phyllis directly with the information on your screen. Now, let's go on location. We're on location at Atkins Middle School to learn about a very cool volunteer project. And as usual, I'm gonna start by letting my guests introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Natasha Hunter and I am the Communities and School Coordinator here at Atkins Middle School. Hi, I'm Marcos Barrera and I am sixth grade here at Atkins Middle School. Hi, my name is Sebastian Gabon, and I'm sixth grade in Atkins Middle School. Great. Okay, so Ms. Hunter, we're going to start with you. Mm -hmm. So for our viewers that might not know a lot about communities and schools, mm -hmm. um, give us a little overview about what CIS is all about. So we're here in the schools to kind of advocate for the students. Um, we want to, there's many things that we're trying to prevent, you know, dropout rate, um, students not coming to school. And so we're here to assist as a resource to um, help the students out, help the families out in any way possible, whether it be clothing, um, food for the weekend, all the way to helping the families out with uh, utilities or any of that sort. So we're just basically um, an advocate to help the families out. That way the student has no reason not to come to school or finish school. And one of the things that you do is you organize these after school programs yes. like the sewing club. Yes. And so tell us a little bit about the sewing club. We have a lady here on campus who works with our students in speech therapy. And she wanted to start this club for a while. Her name is Sean Williams. And we're very grateful to have her assistance. Basically, we're wanting to teach the students basic skills when it comes to sewing, whether it's sewing with the needle or using the sewing machine. And so we were actually there's lots of donations that were given to us, fabric, and we thank the community for helping us out with that. Um, so not much came out of our pockets. It was just donations from everyone. And once we received all that fabric, that's when we jumped into action and we were excited about this uh, community project. Awesome. And so about that community project, Sebastian and Marcus, we're going to hear from you. And so tell us about what we're standing in front of right here. Uh, what you're standing in front of is pillows and blankets that we have all sewed from a sewing machine. And who did you sew those for? Uh, we sewed those for the Rainbow Room uh, foster care. So Sebastian, tell me how these pillows and blankets that y'all sewed for the Rainbow Room are going to help kids. Because they would be cold and it wouldn't be fun to sleep with uh, no blankets and or pillows. Marco, tell me about your experience in sewing this project. Was it hard? Um, what did you learn whenever you were doing it? Um, I learned that it was pretty fun. I didn't think it would be that that fun, but it turned out to be really fun. And I gotta say, uh, it the sewing machines really help out more than needles. 
We haven't tried needles, but I've done it before, so. Yeah, so she makes it a lot faster. What about you, Sebastian? Did you enjoy this project? It was really fun. What did you like most about it? Um, making the, the blankets, I forgot what they're called. Whenever we had to tie the knots and cut them, it took a while though. Well, um, great job. They look beautiful. And Ms. Hunter, thank you for um, helping organize this project that helps children helping other children through community service is really great. So thank all of you for being our guests on Highlights today. Now let's check in with Ben Lawson to see what's happening on our campus social media pages. It was a special performance in the courtyard at Monterey High School where family and friends enjoyed the show by the Plainsmen advancing in one act play. Congratulations to Coronado Mustangs Jeb Kitten and Alan Mann for winning first place in the Amarillo Sandy Tennis Classic. It marked the third tournament win in a row. Estacado's Junior ROTC received a near-perfect score on their accreditation inspection, earning a gold star for the cadets. Way to go, Matadors! The local chapter of Daughters of the American Revolution awarded Lubbock High's Griffin Young the first place Good Citizen Award and scholarship. Thanks for being a great Westerner, Griffin. And congrats to Mrs. Bell at the Talkington School for Young Women Leaders. She is the third teacher on the rise at Talkington. You can submit your nominations to mrsbteacher.com. And remember to follow our district pages for more great stories, news, events, and more. We are Lubbock ISD on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Coming up on the calendar, third nine weeks report cards will be sent home on Thursday, March 25th. And our Board of Trustees also meets on the 25th. You can watch the meeting here on Lubbock ISD TV and streaming on our Lubbock ISD Facebook page. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next week to highlight more great opportunities only in Lubbock ISD. This has been a production of the students and staff at Lubbock ISD TV. I have the power to learn. I have the power to create, yeah. to ask questions, to achieve. Observation. I have the power to make friends, to see ideas. <laughs> Thank you, Edward. Dad. I have the power. You have the power. You have the power. Let Lubbock ISD show you the power.